Bullet and shrapnel wounds, burns. These are the most common cases treated in this operating theatre. In this MSF trauma centre in North East Syria, surgeons have to adapt procedures to the setting. In a country at war, patient care takes on a very different meaning. War surgery isn't taught anywhere in the world, so we have to brief surgeons going to the field on what they should expect and how to treat these types of injuries. Appropriate clinical techniques and protocols do exist, and we have to make sure we explain them to surgeons before they go. The equipment in this hospital has been adapted to these very particular requirements. These patients arrived here in May after their condition was stabilised in small medical posts near the front line. Casualties admitted to the hospital vary with the intensity of the hostilities and if they can manage to get here. But most patients are burn victims. Here again, the teams have to break with conventional procedures. Doctors use a technique that saves time and avoids complications. Training surgeons and anaesthetists before leaving for the field is essential to providing quality care. Most Syrians living in Tripoli need assistance and medical care due to their poor living conditions and the violence they have been subjected to. To assist both them and Lebanese victims of the ongoing local conflict, MSF supports a government hospital in Tripoli. Teams also work in two clinics in deprived neighbourhoods in the city. There are regular clashes between Sunni and Alawite communities and little access to medical services. MSF provides primary healthcare consultations and supplies equipment and drugs. The strain of the local conflict adds to the dislocation and trauma generated by the war in Syria. The refugees and the Lebanese have a growing need for mental health care, which has resulted in an increase in psychological and psychiatric consultations. The MSF clinic in Dava Zigar opened a year ago. Women and children aged under five are treated here. Drug users, sex workers, refugees, the impoverished. Women have access to anti- and postnatal care and reproductive health services. Their children also receive medical follow-up. Particular attention is paid to women most at risk of infectious diseases such as HIV AIDS. Working here is different because you can help many women and their children that they really, really need you. And they don't have any access to other places, to other MOH centers. And I am here, I can talk with them, I can help them, I can consult with them. With them. And uh, it's very good. MSF teams work with the city's hospitals and a network of local organisations assisting the neighbourhood's most disadvantaged families. They refer women and children requiring treatment to the clinic. After their consultations, some of these patients will return to the streets of Dava Zigar, a neighbourhood struggling for survival in the shadow of the capital. When I, I'm talking with my family and my friends and I tell them we have here, a clinic here and we do this for drug users, sex workers and we have many poor people here, they can't believe it. Many people like me, they, are, they don't know about that was a war. Their homes are insalubrious when they have one. Sometimes drug users and addicts, often cut off by their families, these women are vulnerable to abuse. Their stories tell the team of how they've been abandoned. Here they can talk to someone who really listens. (laughs) 
At the beginning of 2013, MSF applauded the promising results of bedequiline, a drug tested against drug-resistant tuberculosis. The drug is still at the clinical evaluation stage, but given the abysmal lack of treatment options, it has received authorization for so-called compassionate use, meaning when all other existing treatments have failed. In Armenia, 15 patients are thus being treated with bedequiline. These patients are patients of, who have all experienced failure of the regular treatment of drug-resistant tuberculosis. That means they've subdued years of injectable treatments, multiple drugs, side effects, and it hasn't worked for them. So it's really a last chance for these patients. Bedequiline is incorporated into a protocol using existing drugs. But to drive real progress in tuberculosis treatment, doctors need several new molecules. There are other drugs in the pipeline and we could hope in the next few years there'll be some studies putting these drugs together to make a new regimen for drug-resistant tuberculosis. One with less side effects, one that's shorter, cheaper and that works better. If these trials prove conclusive, doctors will at last be able to offer their patients radically new treatments and hopefully treat many more people suffering from the disease.